<laughs> Take a look at this big old girl. This is Lucy. She is a reticulated python. She weighs about 50 pounds and she is 50% uh, mainland and 50% Jampea dwarf. Alright guys, so today I want to talk about reticulated pythons. And some people are really confused, uh, especially when they come up to my, my table at the reptile show and they're looking at my snakes that I'm selling. And they're like, ooh, are those pythons? Do they get really big? And, and there's a lot of different kinds of python, but only reticulated pythons grow really large. And most people, when they think of reticulated pythons, they're thinking of the snakes that can get they uh, they can get 20 feet long and as heavy as 350 pounds. I'd say on the average, uh, the really large reticulated pythons probably get about 160, 170 pounds. That's kind of the average. Some of the extreme cases, I think the record was uh, like 24 feet long and uh, 350 pounds, kind of in that range. So so they can get extremely large. And I want to talk uh, something that's uh, about something that's a little bit more confusing, and that is the difference between the mainland reticulated python, dwarf reticulated pythons, and super dwarf reticulated pythons. Okay, so let's start with a discussion on the mainland reticulated python. And it all depends where they come from. So the native habitat for reticulated pythons is southern Asia. And when we talk about mainland, we're talking about the mainland in southern Asia. And all the dwarf and super dwarf localities actually come from islands between Asia and like northwest Australia. There's a whole string of islands in there. And, and uh, when we talk about mainland, we're talking about a large continent with a plentiful food supply and these snakes can grow to an almost unlimited size just because of the unlimited food source. And, and, it's, and, and it's genetic selection, I would say, over the years that have uh, selected for larger and larger snakes. And if someone's selling you a reticulated python and they don't specify that it's dwarf or super dwarf, more than likely that snake is a mainland and it can grow to be one of the giants. Okay, so when we think about dwarf reticulated pythons and super dwarf reticulated pythons, um, the, the only problem with the dwarf and the super dwarf is that they don't come in the color and pattern mutations is the giants, the mainland. So, so what people are really striving for now is they're trying to breed the dwarf and the super dwarf back to the mainland to, to get some of the colors and patterns and then they breed it back to the super dwarf and dwarf, uh, the, the pure super dwarf and dwarf trying to, to make the snake smaller and smaller and it gets really confusing because now, now we want, a, a lot of people want a smaller snake but they still want all the colors and patterns and mutations associated with the mainland reticulated pythons but they want it in a smaller package. So I actually have another reticulated python here. This one is a purple albino, 37.5% super dwarf, 50% Japan, 12.5% mainland. And, and you can kind of tell the potential size by how much mainland it has in it at 12.5%. You wouldn't think it would get that large, 50% Jampeas. Jampeas uh, can get pretty large. And I was actually looking, I uh, found an article online and they said that Jampeas, even on the, the island uh, where they originate, there's a huge difference in uh, different, I guess you'd call them subspecies of reticulated pythons. It's all the same subspecies, but depending on the location where they come from, on that particular island, some grow bigger and some grow smaller. So I was looking just at the Jampea and the size difference between the smallest line and the, and the biggest line. The, the smallest one, they said, grows to like 8 to 9 feet. The biggest one gets up to 16 feet. So even between the Jampeas, you don't really know which line you have, and that can affect the size difference, uh, uh, the potential size difference as an adult. So I'm going to open up this tub. Uh, this is Sunny, so it's the, it's the, my potential mate for my other one, and I'm, he's, <laughs> he made a mess. I just cleaned him up the other day, and he's in feeding mode, looking for a rat, and 
This is about the biggest this snake will get. So, so you can get uh, reticulated pythons anywhere from uh, this size, even smaller than this. I've seen them about almost half this size, to uh, anywhere from this size to to Lucy's size. She's about 50 pounds. This one's. Uh, I'd say the last time I weighed him, he's about 25. He's probably about 30 pounds now. And if you go with the big retics, you know, they can get over 100 pounds. And what I'm really looking for in a snake is something that will breed genetics, uh, uh, the, some of the morphs, into a smaller package. But I still wanted a larger snake. So I didn't really want a snake. <laughs> he's kind of exploring a little bit. I didn't really want a snake that would be too small because... Um, if, I, I really wanted a snake that was big and impressive, but I didn't want um, a monster that I couldn't handle myself. And that's kind of why I went with the dwarf and the super dwarf combos. And honestly, when I bought these snakes, I had no idea how big these snakes would actually get. And, and this one, I, I honestly thought this would be uh, a lot smaller because it was only 12.5% mainland. But it's, for me, this is almost the perfect size. Okay, so I brought my trash can in and my little scooper, and I want to show you how I clean up this mess here that uh, he made. <laughs> and another thing I should tell you about super dwarfs, I actually had a comment, someone on, on my one of my videos left a comment, and they're like, oh yeah, yeah I'm going to get a super dwarf. And super dwarfs, they say they are a lot nippier than a mainland. So if you notice this guy... He's, he's always been really skittish, kind of nippy, kind of flighty, and that's just kind of the, I think that's the, the super dwarf influence actually in the, the line of reticulated python that, oh, <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to scare him too much. I just want to let him know that, hey, I'm coming in and don't bite me. <laughs> and once you, once you get a handle on them, they're pretty good. So, I... I kind of move them just a little to get them in handling mode and then I just kind of scoop up their mess here. It's clean up, spot cleaning a retic isn't too bad, especially with an, a, a top opening. Now for Lucy, it's a little bit more difficult with the side opening because you kind of have to crawl into the enclosure. But she didn't, just wasn't really happy with uh, a, a top opening tub. That's kind of why I went to the other. Uh, enclosure but if you're thinking about getting a, uh, a super dwarf I would say they're a lot f more flighty they're a lot more skittish and it'll definitely take a lot more handling and patience to really calm them down and in a mainland retic for some reason they're always really mellow and and Lucy's got enough mainland she's 50% mainland she has never been skittish never snapped at me and <laughs> when this thing was small this thing would, I bought it from someone else and it was a, like a wild snake. It was musking and biting and peeing and <laughs> and every time I'd, I'd go near it, it would just snap at me. And I don't, I don't know if that was some of the bad experiences the snake had or if it was just um, part of the super dwarf influence. And I've got to the point where we kind of have a respect for each other. Uh, it's, it's, we're still not <laughs> on good terms like, like I am with Lucy. Lucy would never bite me. And this one, I'm, I'm still kind of, um, I'm still kind of a little weary of this one. So if someone sells you a reticulated python that's an albino or a tiger or a platinum or <laughs> any of the other reticulated python color morphs, and they say it's a super dwarf, for sure, you have to ask, what is the percentage of Super Dwarf? And if you don't know, uh, you, you potentially, you don't know the potential size that the, the reticulated python's going to be. And, and as, far, as far as I know, to my knowledge, there's, there's not a pure Super Dwarf in any of the morph patterns or colors. So you're really taking a chance if you don't know the percentages of the dwarf and the super dwarf in the mainland. So another kind of a black mark I'd say on reticulated pythons that some people shy away from them. Uh, they actually passed this law. Uh, it was uh, in the Lacey Act. You can look it up and it banned interstate transport of reticulated pythons. And it didn't specify the size of reticulated pythons. So you can have 
like a super dwarf that's really really small a pure super dwarf they only get maybe six feet and they they don't get that big around they're not really heavy i've seen super dwarfs uh fully mature weigh about uh, two and a half to three pounds so you're talking a pretty small snake for a pure super dwarf kind of looks almost like the color and pattern is a normal ball python not nothing real fancy there's uh, there's nothing mixed in just the pure super dwarf and and there's there's quite a demand actually for them uh, people wanting to mix them back into some of the big reticulated pythons and and bring the size down but the lacy act really um, uh, it, it, it kind of shut people down because the only place you could get reticulated pythons were within your state. And finally they lifted the ban and now you can ship, you can freely ship reticulated pythons across state lines. I think they're still banned in certain states. Uh, I think, you know, like Florida, I know they're banned. So, so if you move to Florida and you have reticulated pythons, you can't bring them into the state. And I think one of the reasons that you can't bring them into the state because uh, there's a lot of hurricanes and if it blows your house down and they get out they can live and thrive in the environment and and uh, the pet trade <laughs> the, it released you know they have a problem with Burmese pythons right now and those all um, pretty much I'm sure they all came from the pet trade people had them in their house a hurricane blows you know their snake enclosure off the stand and the, the snakes escape they get into the environment and then we have a problem. So uh, a lot of these reptiles, they're banned from going into southern states such as Florida. Just something to keep in mind if you're thinking about getting into the reticulated pythons. So another weird kind of amazing fact that I've heard about retics is say for example you take a dwarf reticulated python and you breed it to a mainland. And, and there's actually two different ways you can do it. And based on how you do it, you can end up with different size offspring that reach a different potential size. And that is, uh, it depends uh, the gender of the snake that lays the eggs. So, so if, you, if you start with a mainland female, the, and the female lays the eggs, then the, the snakes are going to be bigger because the mainland lays bigger eggs and you get more of an influence from the mainland so you'll end up with, <laughs> with, with bigger offspring with a bigger potential size <clears throat> and for example if you started with a super dwarf female and you bred a mainland male back into that super dwarf the eggs are going to be really small and have more of an influence from the super dwarf and the offspring will have a smaller potential size so there are actually different hybrids of other snakes as well. I've seen people breed ball pythons black, back to blood pythons and you get this weird blood, half blood python, half ball python mix. I've even seen where people take a woma, Australian woma python, and they mix it with a ball python and you get this weird looking hybrid. And this is almost the same. Usually hybrids are really frowned upon between the different uh, species of snakes. But in this case, uh, we don't really consider them species. We consider them subspecies. And if you look at the, the if you look at the the faces and the shapes and the patterns, they're almost identical. They're just different sizes. And it's it's really well accepted breeding um, in the pet industry. Breeding the super dwarf with the dwarf with the mainland, and you end up with <laughs> a whole array of complicated genetics. And you really have to check the genetics. Uh, as far as um, what percentage they are of each but I'd say overall in the pet trade it's very well accepted a lot more than if you're breeding species to species and you're getting these hybrid snakes. So one last thing to consider when you're thinking about getting into reticulated pythons it's easy to go to a show pick up a little snake a little uh, reticulated python hatchling fall in love decide to buy it but keep in mind when that thing if it's especially if it's a hundred percent mainland reticulated python and it gets to be 150 pounds most people can't handle a 150 pound snake by themselves and it's extremely dangerous they have a lot of power they're really quick and they can surprise you i've been surprised by mine <laughs> i've had some close calls let me tell you and these are dwarf and super dwarfs i feel at this point with a 50 pound snake my biggest one lucy i think i can safely handle her myself 
but if I had anything bigger, you definitely need uh, at least two, maybe three people at all times handling a snake that size. And, and just think about the maintenance and the care and uh, pretty much on a daily basis, you know, these snakes, they can, they can be fed once a week, but you should spot clean a couple times a week. And when you're getting in there, it's always good to have someone else around. So, so if you're thinking about reticulated pythons, it's good to have another snake person on hand that can help you work these snakes. So another challenge I would say as far as uh, dealing with reticulated pythons, especially the larger one, and I kind of went through this to a certain extent with Lucy, is that they grow really fast. Their growth is exponential. You wouldn't believe how fast they grow. And, and they'll go from a small tub to a medium tub to a large tub to a full-on boa tub and then to a larger six-foot enclosure. And that's within a couple years. So... So the other, the other thing is, not only is it the, the, the cost of buying the reticulated python and all the food and bedding, but you also have to think about chasing the enclosure sizes. And just this last enclosure, the big one for Lucy, uh, with the whole thing, the setup, the heat on the top and the bottom and the, and the thermostat controller and, the, <laughs> and everything, it cost me about $1,000. So you figure that's kind of like the tail end and the, not considering the cost of the boa tubs and then the smaller tubs and then the hatchling tubs. And it's, it's, it's kind of, I think, one of the biggest costs and one of the biggest challenges is, is finding the proper housing for reticulated pythons. And that's kind of one of the advantages if you're going with the super dwarf is they don't really get that big and you only need some, you know, maybe you can start with a hatchling tub and go to like a medium sized tub would be fine for um, like a super dwarf. But if you're thinking about mainland, <laughs> you, have to change, you have to change enclosures quite frequently to keep up with their explosive growth. So another thing, if you're thinking about breeding reticulated pythons, the large giant retics, they can have a clutch size of up to 80 eggs or more. <laughs> and, and you think about um, ball pythons, you know, with, a, with, a, with an average clutch size of about seven, uh, you can move projects along like 10 times faster with retics. And it used to be ball pythons were kind of the leading cutting edge of the morphs, the different colors and patterns of snakes. And retics, they're close behind now. Some of the big breeders, you know, they're really moving stuff forward really fast because they're having really large clutch size of 80 eggs. And they can hit the odds almost every time because there's just so many eggs. And if you're thinking about super dwarfs, uh, the, the clutch sizes are a lot smaller and it moves a little bit slower, I'd say. But um, I think now if you mix them back with the mainland retics, uh, you can really advance uh, on a lot of these projects. So that wraps up my discussion on the mainland dwarf and super dwarf reticulated pythons. If you're thinking about getting a reticulated python, I would highly recommend it. It's really exciting, really rewarding, and I love the big snakes. Uh, I can't imagine ever not having a big snake in my life. So thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.